This is the thing. Who you choose to hang around with, who you choose to have in your posse, is exactly who you become. Choose your posse wisely. I'm here to tell you that putting yourself first is not selfish, it's revolutionary. Welcome to the Ayurvedic Woman Podcast, empowering women to light their lives on fire through Ayurveda, yoga, spirituality, and fitness. I'm going to say this one last time. Stop apologizing. Women do this all the time. They apologize for everything. What are you feeling sorry about? Stop. If you do not put yourself first, nothing else happens. Stop putting everybody in front of you and put yourself first so that those people that you need to care for and take care of can be cared for because you have put yourself as the priority. Jai Bhagwan, woman warriors, and everybody out there, welcome to the Ayurvedic Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Satyavani, and I want to wish all of you a happy new year. I know we're kind of late in the game this year, um, but my beautiful co-host is with me today. Hello. Hello. Prajma Dava here. Hi, everyone. Happy new year. And I think we deliberately decided not to do like a new year thing as soon as the turn of the new year came. You know, I don't know about you, but I felt like I needed to ease into the new year, you know, with uh, just thoughts and process and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But we are happy to be back and uh, yes. we have some exciting stuff going on um, this year. So I uh, not only wanted to welcome everybody to the new year and back to the Ayurvedic Woman podcast, but also to give a brief overview of before we get started with um, the meat of our podcast, but just to give a brief overview of what Prajna and I have in store for all of you um, this year. We decided that we are going to theme this year around purpose and the importance of having a purpose, and that's gonna come in all different directions this year. And we decided to break up each of the quarters of this year um, surrounding something specific around purpose. So this first quarter, we are going to talk about establishing your purpose and everything around establishing a purpose. Because I think a lot of folks are out there right now, and Praj, please jump in and let me know what you think. Um, a lot of folks are out there right now walking around purposeless mm -hmm. and not really knowing what they're supposed to be doing, um, how they're supposed to be doing it, uh, what is the meaning of life, you know, all of those kinds of things. I think there's big question marks around yeah. that. So, yeah. And yeah. I, uh, as you introed so wonderfully, uh, you know, getting a call it a late start to the year um, or to the new year. This is where a lot of people actually already start to lose their gusto in their New Year's resolutions. And Agreed. so um, two things there. One, this can be a, you can start any day of the year and you can start, you know, refreshed. And that's why I think having, doing what we're doing on purpose uh, throughout the entire year, um, starting out with establishing uh, your purpose is let's get away from the resolutions because yes yes i think we're finding that they really don't work that well they don't last very long mm -hmm. um, whereas focusing on a purpose that is a lifelong voyage like that is something that you can cultivate and i think is going to do so many people so much more benefit so agreed the wisdom of one prajna madhavi i mean hello yes of course so and i i could not agree with you more um Outside of establishing our purpose in the first quarter, what we decided is that in the second uh, quarter, we are going to talk about building your purpose. So once you're like, yes, this is what my purpose is in life. This is, you know, and knowing that our purpose can change year to year, et cetera, et cetera. But also knowing that you have to also, you, you got to put some juice behind that. You got to 
You got to put some experiences and people and situations that are going to help you build the momentum around that purpose. So that will be quarter two. And then quarter three, how do you then, after you're through the building phase, how do you manifest it? How do we get it out there um, into the world? And what's very interesting, um, I think that we'll find out as we're having these discussions and having guests on the show that um, will also talk to these points, that the building and the manifesting almost start to happen simultaneously. Like as you start to set these intentions rather than resolutions, we start to set these intentions around our lives that all of a sudden things start coming in your direction. And we actually just had this conversation um, about the work that we're doing um, in yes. the world, which, uh, which we will definitely share um, with each of you. And then finally, the fourth quarter is about living your purpose. So once you have established it, once you have built it, once you, once you have manifested it, how then do you live it? How does that become just something that is part of you? So um, we're excited about the four quarters ahead and, um, and what all of these um, stories and experiences that we're going to share. And also, obviously, talking about it from the Vedic perspective, you know, incorporating the Ayurveda piece of it in the yoga piece of it. And of course, we will have our favorite Jyotish astrologer, Casey Scott, back on this year or so. But Praj, I do want you to share um, with our guests what uh, what we were talking about um, this year, uh, just a couple of days ago, about like, okay, where are we going and what are we doing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it, you know, I don't do resolutions. I don't really think about those things. I, I mean, I jot down maybe some again, some things that I want to, um, create or manifest. And one thing that happened this year with, with kind of the start of the year is, uh, everything felt a little, things became a little disjointed, um, mm -hmm. to where, you know, I know that you were having some challenges with some disjointed on where you were at. And, mm -hmm. um, I actually started the year with thinking, I'm just going to do what it is that I know I can do which starts on all the kosher or starts on the koshic levels, the physical yes. level, and then moves on from there. Mm -hmm. And having that strong physical body, um, you know, getting my emotions in check, um, keeping the wisdom piece uh, moving forward, doing everything that I know I can do within me yes. and allowing things to then show up as that is happening and not being too concerned with me having to force them to show up or me having to force them or make them happen. But if I focus on what I can control and yes. on me, which I know to sound that kind of sounds selfish, but no, I it does not it's, sound selfish. It's yeah, smart. Um, I mean, to some it does, but I think right. we're trying to teach people that being selfish is not necessarily a bad thing if you're doing it for the reason of, like we just talked about, the no fruits of the labor. We're doing it just because this is what we feel is the right thing to do. And we don't really expect a result. Um, nope. Take the ego out of it. And things just start to kind of appear. And when you're not yeah. concerned about when or how or yep. all of that, um, that it really just will kind of show up out of nowhere. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. So I love that. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a hundred percent true. And really what a lot of that means for both of us to share with our listeners, what we've been talking about is leading by example. So we, we don't have control of what's going on in the world. I and mean, we were just talking about the craziness of AI and, you know, like the robots are taking over, you know, Terminator two, it's a real thing. Um, but we don't have control um, over these, those things, but I do have control over what, I'm doing in my physical, energetic, mental, emotional awareness, consciousness, um, and my spiritual bodies. And, um, and once that gets put into play, I, tr and I've actually even experienced it over the past couple of days. It was just like, you know what? I, I'm most of the time, as, as you know, because you know me very well, Praj, you know, I'm a planner and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, we're going to do this and this is how, you know, I want to do it and et cetera, et cetera. And now I'm just sort of like, you know what? I'm taking I'm taking my foot off the accelerator and I am going to 
just take the steps forward and be aware and see what comes in. And when the information comes in, then we can make sense of it and design it and move it forward. And actually, I'm excited about that because I don't know about you, but I feel like the pressure gets taken off. Yes. Absolutely. And I've noticed it even in my classroom, just that's my little microcosm of the macrocosm in my classroom. It's like, just let's see where this goes. And if I need to, I had to today, I had to sit with a group that just was not going to be a very effective group unless I sat there and helped them out. And it's just those, those things were like, just take take your foot off the pedal. Like I don't have to watch everybody in the room right now. I need to help this group. And, yes. you know, it was fine. No. It, nothing happened. Like no. <laughs> no disasters occurred while I was sitting with this group. It was just fine. And, mm-hmm. and learning, knowing that I am very capable that if a lesson doesn't go well, that I can just change it and change direction. And yes. it's not a big deal. Right. Um, that word right there. I absolutely love because Mm -hmm. I think part of putting your foot on the pedal and going forward, there's a time and a place for all of that. And I think that when there's momentum moving you in that direction, it's fantastic. But I also am observing now, just based on what you said, that sometimes when we just sit back and we allow that it's also a sign of self-confidence. Like mm-hmm. whatever comes my way, I'm going to be able to handle it. Yeah. And, and my purpose will match up with what is coming in my direction. And so I think this whole idea in this first quarter about establishing our purpose or one's purpose is um, really incredible because I think a lot of folks are like, oh my God, you know, I, I, I got to figure out what my purpose is. And then like, they start grabbing at things rather than like, what is it that actually resonates with you? And when you think about that and you do it with yourself, what comes in that, like what will come in that direction is exactly what it is that you need. Yeah. Um, and you know, what started me on this path was reading the Dharma book. Yes which I would say is a shout out for that book because that is what really, when I started reading some of that, it just started to really align for me. They're like, same, this is just who you are. Like, these are what your strengths are. This is what you're good at. Like stop trying to force something that shouldn't happen. Um, or isn't meant to happen. That's right. Um, That's not in your purview. Like take, take the load off of your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And realize that there are other people in your life that fill that space, um, that have those strengths. Yep. Yep. And And that's why you and I do so well together (laughs) because you are the educator outsider. I'm the warrior outsider slash educator. And like, I need you for things and you need me for things. And that's Mm -hmm. why it's just like, it works really well together. And like, as a shout out, like shameless shout out here. Mm -hmm. Raj and I are doing um, the Dharma Circle this year for gals that are interested in living a purposeful life. And that program starts next month. Um, in February, it runs until December. So it'll go February to December. It is online. It is open to everybody. We do have one in-person retreat, which will be very exciting. Mm-hmm. So if you are indeed interested in joining the Dharma Circle and like taking this establishing purpose, living a purposeful life, et cetera, this journey with us this entire year, you got to get in on it. Um, You will not regret it. So you can go to the womanwarrioracademy.com and look under short courses and you will find all of the gems. But this book that Prajna is talking about um, is, is Ayurvedic and yogic and Jyotish in nature. And so, um, and it's, it, it like makes everything just so clear. You're just like, mm-hmm. oh my God. And it's also very affirming. You know, it's very affirming for that. And so then we're going to take it a step further with actually providing guidance and more education and activities and thoughtful exercises to get people, you know, into that space. So it's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. To Thanks. really get them reflecting on what they're reading and yes, yeah, going deeper. 
Yeah. Because it does need to happen with a book like this. It, it does. does take reflection for indeed. sure. In, yeah. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Mm. So we've got the map for this year, everybody. Uh, we wanted to give you that snapshot. Um, and I actually wanted to do a wellness check-in with you, mm-hmm. my dear sister. Yeah. Um, we we had like, we were in two different directions. Um, You're still looking a bit tan for me. Am, am, I, am I, t- am I t- am You're I looking tan? a little tan, yes. <laughs> with my red we, nose. We people who had to stay in the inversion <laughs> and the snow. I'm um, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. No, I wouldn't be. <laughs> Why don't you share first just how lovely that was, your okay. little wellness, yeah. Well, my wellness is fantastic. Um, I actually, right after, as you know, Right um, after Thanksgiving, um, I took, actually, right before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. at the end of 2023, took my um, Krav Maga level three exam and passed it. So that was very mm-hmm. exciting. Um, and so now, as I have been told by one August Ritter, who was on our last podcast for 2023, that the higher the levels, the longer the training. So, um, and I'm good with it. I'm, I'm actually like, okay, this is great. But what I decided to do was that right after um, Thanksgiving, I took basically two months off. And uh, and then Michael and I, we um, for those of you who don't know Michael, my husband, we went on a cruise, um, which was absolutely lovely. Um, it was through Central and South America. So we had two stops in Mexico and then one in Guatemala and then Ecuador and Peru, and finally we wound up in Chile. And it was great. I mean, it was just, it's actually the first time he and I have been on a vacation together where we have not taken a group of people, where it was just the two of us in like five years. So it was refreshing and wonderful. And I was not a cruise person when I first met Michael. He's like, let's go on a cruise. I'm like, ugh. I'm like, no, that's like telling a New Yorker to move to Florida. It's like, blah, like you don't know. And he's like, come on, come on, we'll try. He's like, just give it a try. And I'm like, all right, fine. I'll give it a try. And we went on our first cruise. God, it's got to be 10, 15 years ago. Um, and I was hooked. Mm-hmm. I was hooked. And so like, girl, you got to come on a cruise. Yeah, cruise. I've never been on a cruise. Oh, my God. Oh yeah. my God. It, yeah. it's, it literally is. I, I kind of have the same idea. I'm like, really? Cruise? Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I know. And, and, and I, food I, gets shipped in and yeah, yeah, it, yeah. yeah I totally yeah. get it. I totally, <laughs> to- I, I was that person, but now I got to tell you, I'm a believer. Mm-hmm. And like, and I know also people like, oh, environmentally it's terrible, et cetera, et cetera. You know what? Like plane flights are horrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so plane flights do more damage than the cruise lines do. Um, but it was a wonderful experience. I mean, we saw, um, whales and dolphins and we swam with sea lions and we saw the humble penguins and it was wonderful and it was just a very 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 needed break from the physical energetic mental emotional consciousness spiritual perspective so i'm very excited but when we got back i went right back to it you know hitting it and I was even saying to August today, because I had um, my personal training session with him, I feel great. I feel great. I am, you know, six months away from turning 50 and I feel fucking jacked, like just very efficient, very excited. And I um, am very excited that you and I have signed up for our first Spartan race. <laughs> so this is like, you're like, you're not convinced yet, are you? It's just, not quite. Okay. When, I, when I can start doing pull-ups, I'll be a little more convinced. Okay. But, you're yeah. you're going to be fine. You're going to yep. be fine. But I, I'm actually really, really excited. And I will be mm-hmm. completely honest. Um, I am a total shoes ball. And I, when I signed up for the race, they gave you a discount on buying the shoes. And I got the shoes. Oh, you so the shoes. I, I will tell you, I recommend mm. it because yeah. I, I understand why they're needed, but we'll talk about that another time. So yeah, cool. My, my wellness is great. I feel great. I'm full of energy. I, I, my, everything is really kind of dialed in right now. And so I'm in my favorite stage of my training year, which is um, bulking. So, you know, eat heavy and, mm-hmm. uh, and lift heavy, which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And 
I'm savoring that until, you know, about seven weeks out because then we go into shred season. That's when I'm cranky. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, what about you? What about you? Um, well, I did a lot of snow shoveling, um, while you were gone. Um, so there was that, that's great exercise. I got my weighted vest. So I was doing a little, say, you shoveling. did it with the weighted vest once. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Didn't really do it after the once. Yeah. Um, maybe I did it twice. Um, you're a badass. it's, it's a chore. Um, but it's, it's, it's good. I mean, it's a great workout. I mean, just my mindset, my mindset shift from the diet I used to eat to the one that I'm now, which is much more on protein. Um, I'm just seeing such advantages in that. And I know that all of you out there that talk about the benefits of protein, I know you're going to agree. Um, and it's, I just feel so much better, so much stronger. Um, you look great. Thank you. No, um, great. Like I, when we were in the gym, like last week, mm-hmm. I was like, damn girl, those legs are like, bam. Like, yeah, holy I'm, cow. I'm just Incredible. really starting to get in that mindset of, I just want to be strong and I want to yes. look strong and I want to have all of those things. And when you get that mindset, it's, you know, that whole fear of a lot of women is like, oh, I'm going to get big. No. Mm, I'm not really finding that. And no. that's always been a fear of mine too, but I'm, I'm just really no. not seeing that at all. No. Um, no, it's, it's my clothes fit exactly the same. If yes, not even they actually, they actually better. fit better. They fit yeah. better because you look um, fucking damn good. Damn good. Thank you. So, so men um, be very careful out there. Mm, okay. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And just, you know, kind of walking around the gym, kind of with a little bit of swagger. Like I know what I'm doing. Like I'm going to do do these things and, um, drinking a lot of water. Like I just was telling you, I'm trying to get Mm -hmm. like at least, I don't know, 60 ounces, even before 7 a.m. I love it. I'm trying to get 60 ounces just so they get a great start to my day because once I makes a difference. Yeah. Once I hit school time, it's like, I, I just forget to drink enough. And well, and then you're under the lights and then there's like, you know, the dehydration effect. And I was like, oh yeah. Standing, yeah. talking under yes. fluorescent lights, Ugh. um, forgetting to drink water. It's yeah. It's but you know, mm-hmm. it's choices that I can make is making sure I get out during my prep and get some fresh air and, yep. um, doing all those things. Cause yeah, yeah, we live in that world. We do. Um, until we don't. So. Until AI sorry. takes all of our jobs and then we have no jobs. <laughs> I love it. Well, you look fabulous. Uh, and and you. I know this is going to be a huge growth year for both of us. Um, I'm really and, excited and for the Spartan thing. thing. Like that's just been a really, I think, mm-hmm. I know it's going to be hard. I know oh, God, yeah. But I mean, those are the things that if it doesn't challenge you, it's not going to change you kind of thing. So, yep. And we can do hard things. Yep. We can. we can do it. We've, we've done hard things. I mean, mm-hmm. we've tested in Krav. We have lifted heavy weights. We have done our runs. We would, you know, show, snow shoveling with mm-hmm. a, you know, 20 or 30 pound weighted vest on. I mean, like, these are hard things. And <laughs> As I walk down the street sometimes, just the way the weighted vest looks, I'm yeah. just thinking people are like, she's wearing a bulletproof vest. <laughs> Which in a way I kind of am, I suppose, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I kind of get that sense that people are like, what is she doing? That's funny. But anyway. In the, in the wintertime though, especially like in boys, like I have that big black puffy jacket, you know. Oh, I, I put wear. it on over my jacket. Yeah, yeah. You put it over the jacket. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, you do. You do. Oh, yeah. oh my God. And it's you're got hilarious. the little slits in it. So it really does look like it's a, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's funny. Yeah, I mine's just, not really for fashion. Day. Mine's like you put it on, it's got like it's pretty <laughs> obvious what yeah. There's not a lot of glam to it. So I just put my I put my big jacket over it. I'm just like because it's like <laughs> an extra layer to keep me warm. In the, uh-huh. the yeah. blues no, that's funny. I just throw mine over. Yeah. So you're a <laughs> dog. I love it. So funny. Well, um mm-hmm. just a, a little bit, a little snapshot of, of uh, content today as it relates to why we're focusing on purpose this year. And from this 
as a review, a, a five Koshik perspective. So for those of you that are new to the Ayurvedic Woman podcast, um, the Koshas are the layers of the self. And um, from a Vedic perspective, from an Ayurveda perspective, yoga perspective, from a Jyotish perspective, um, we look at the self as multidimensional. And so we have these five layers and we start out with the physical layer, which is known as the Anamaya Kosha. Then we, um, we layer up to the um, energetic layer, um, which is the Pranamaya Kosha. And then we go up from there to the Manamaya Kosha, which is the mental emotional self. And then um, from there, we go to the Vijnanamaya Kosha, um, say that five times fast. Mm. And, um, and that is our awareness and our consciousness um, what we often call in the Vedic world that Prajna and I operate in as the witness consciousness. Like, what are you witnessing? What are you aware of? What are you conscious of? And then that goes up to what is known as the bliss body, which transcends all of the bodies, known as the Ananda Maya Kosha. Um, so what is our connection to our internal divinity, as well as the divinity beyond ourselves. So our perspective this year on on establishing purpose um, and building your purpose and manifesting your purpose and living your purpose is all going to be through the lens of those five koshas. And Raj, I just want you know to ask you like any of your insights regarding um, those koshas that stand out and the connection with purpose. Is there anything that you wanted to share with our audience today? Uh, well, with the uh, reading the book, those started to go through my mind, the Dharma book of mm -hmm. being an educator, uh, which was just my main focus. They, they never say mm -hmm. that you're any one particular thing. Correct. Correct. Um, just like you're not one dosha. Yeah. You know, how, right. you know, the educator is usually not super big into physical fitness. And I'm like, well, what the hell with that? <laughs> like I want, right. so it's, you know, as you look through that, um, when you get to that book and start reading it, it really starts to bring some of those things out. And for me, being the uh, noticing that I'm more educator than anything else, it really started to make sense as to why I'm drawn to the things that I am. Mm -hmm. um, just... What stood out to you, like, mainly, like, that you were drawn to, and you're like, oh, my God, yes, of course. Oh, boy. Um, I had it highlighted in the book, and then I mm -hmm. didn't bring the book with me today. It's okay. It, it we was, can circle back to it another time. Yeah. Um, I, I know, because I, I highlighted a very specific part of the book that, you know, educators, there are certain things that they need to be concerned with, but... Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it really was kind of that they can't do it for the fruit of the labor. Like they have yes. to do it just for the that's your purpose. process. Yeah. Like you just do it for the process of doing it for educating. Right. And then and I creating started change about yeah. creating change in the world. Yeah. And so that's coming, what educators do. Coming back to the koshas then it's like, okay, if I'm doing this, not wanting fruits of the labor, I just need to, like we said, just lead by example. So my physicality needs to, okay, you want to look like this or you want to be powerful like this. Here are the things that I can educate you about on how to do it. Yes. Um, if you see me not getting, you know, emotionally distracted or, you know, the, the emotion side of it, well, here's the things that you can do to learn how to do that. If you want to yes. learn more about just being the witness and why don't things bother you and then here's how, and it's through my experience. Like, I yes. think that's, that's what we really have to understand is that all of this stuff doesn't really hold any weight unless you've experienced it and you can speak from your experience. And Absolutely. so, and we teach never from our lives curriculum. Yeah. And know? if you never, if you never go into that realm, then how can you teach about it if you've never been there and experienced it? Um, so I think that was a lot of what I took from Awesome. So I love it. Yeah. I love it. We uh so on um, in the five Dharma types book um that we are both reading and that we're gonna be using for our course, the 
the dharma type that my main dharma type is the warrior like shocker um and the thing that really resonated with me and i and i highlighted it in the book was from a physical energetic mental emotional consciousness and spiritual perspective anything a warrior sets out to do they can accomplish mm -hmm. they're like when you set your mind to something it happens and i'm like yes and and even though like i've had that experience in my life where i'm just like okay i'm gonna go and do this and like boom it happens it was so affirming to know that like karmically mapped out there in the universe that that was the case so it's like okay like am i crazy you know like but rather mm -hmm. like and it also took pressure off of that vata mind that i can get you know like we all can get where it was like i got to make this happen i got to make this happen i got to make this happen etc versus like no it is happening and like mm -hmm. it will happen and you set your mind to it and you can you can make it happen and it also um was very cool to see how i need to lean on you as the educator for certain things for me like perspective and and all that and i'll i'll share with our audience like one of my intentions that i shared with uh prajna this year was um if i start to get harsh and edgy and and in a non-productive way and like critical was something critical, that you yeah right that you critical mentioned to me. absolutely critical or i'm like just acting like a dick it's i need for her to as the educator to call me out on it pull me back and say hey look like let's let's discuss this let's look at this from a wider perspective and and that just felt really great because it's like okay now now i have i mean you know, you're my BFF. I mean, that's, it's very easy, but it was also good to know. It's like, you know, there's this embedded resource inside of you that is resourceful for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also like on the flip side of that, the warrior elements that I can bring towards you when it's like, how do you operationalize your experiences, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's what I thought was, you know, really cool. And that, yep. yeah. You're the catalyst to my stagnation when I get, you know, kind of stuck or in my yep. own head or yep. mm -hmm. Vata, you know, I'm going to die. You were that not going to die. That dog has fleas. <laughs> yeah. Does that dog have fleas? I'm like, <laughs> what? We're in the Indian Ocean. Like, that dog have fleas? No, no, that dog does not have fleas. You are not going yeah. to die. So, yeah. And it was really cool because um, I actually had um, Michael read and um, and he took the the quiz and he is a hardcore outsider. And it's like, mm -hmm. of course, you know, and as a Taoist, yeah. of course. And like, it's very interesting to um, hear about like the qualities of the outsider, et cetera. So for those of you that are out there that are like, hmm, what is this all about? I'm telling you, join the Dharma mm -hmm. Circle. And we're going to talk about purpose. We're going to talk about these Dharma types. And, and once you understand that, and you're like, oh my goodness, I resonate driving our lives in that direction so that we live purposefully. And like all the stuff comes as a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. So, yep. Awesome. Hmm. Well, friends, it's a brief one today because we are just introducing um, and welcoming all of you to the new year. Wanted to give you a snapshot of what our outline is for the year. And so that brings us to our Oracle card. And I have them. Mm -hmm. And actually, I deliberately brought these. These are the life purpose nice. Oracle cards because we're talking about purpose here. So... My beautiful friend, co-host, and mate, give me a number between 1 and 30. 18. Okay. Boom. Ooh. The card is the artist. Mm. Now that's fascinating. 
Engaging in artistic activities is beneficial to your career and every other area of your life. And so I want to apply this to like everybody who's listening. This is setting the tone for our year on purposeful living and living with purpose, establishing purpose and all of the things, because we do become the artists of our own lives. Mm -hmm. So let me read what the, whoop, hang on a second. Let me get my the little book here. Hold on. All right. The artists. Da, 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 da. All right. Your inner world is colorful. And this card is a reminder that your career and purpose can be colorful as well. With your artistic eye, you naturally gravitate toward beautiful shades and shapes and objects. And now the angels want to bring artistry into your field. You will feel more fulfilled with work that helps you express your inner artist. Ooh. You drew this card because it's important for you to take action steps as the artist you truly are. If you had unlimited time and money, what type of creative work would you engage in? Your answer to this question indicates a beneficial avenue for you to explore now. In fact, this is precisely what will open up all of your channels so that you experience more support, time, and creative energy. So please take the opportunity to engage in something artistic, such as painting, jewelry, making, an art course, sketching, dancing, sewing, and so forth. Your finished creation may or not become the basis of a commercial venture. However, your actions and artistic expression will definitely have a positive effect upon every other area of your life. Mm. Had me at dancing. That's I, I know it did. Like I what know. with that? And then as soon as you said dancing, uh, yep, there it yep. is. That's so I've been thinking about it for weeks. Gotta take that dance class and do it. So that I love dancing. I, I just love to dance. And you are damn good at it. Folks, I have video. Okay. <laughs> I have video in India doing the Bollywood thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chapter and verse. And just I, may I mean People uh, were just like, you were just smiling. I'm like, that's what happens when I dance. Like, oh it's just, God. people don't do it nearly enough. They don't. It. Like, there's something you, to that. You need to incorporate that this year in the, mm -hmm. in the artistry and the creation of your life purpose as we go on this journey together and with yeah. all of the, and everybody else who is joining us. So, yep. I love it. All mm. right. Oh, well, I'm excited for this year and we're going to have some great guests on this year, folks. And so um, I hope you stay with us. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments for both the Spotify podcast as well as our YouTube channel. And um, we will be back very, very soon. Any final, final words or thoughts? Boy, not really. Okay. That's, yeah. Great to All be right. back. It's so. great to be back. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. And Jai Bhagwan, may your soul be victorious. Is life hard? Yeah, it's really fucking hard. And you can also have the life it is that you want. You just got to work for it.